Hi, welcome back to CVEN 305. Today we have four learning objectives. Learning objectives. Uh, meaning of the various terms that are used in torsion so that's item number one item number two how are the formulae used and what do they mean third item how or how is the angle of twist and the torque related Fourth one is how does the stress vary along the cross section. So these are the four items that we are going to look at. So let's start with item number one. What are the various terms used? So remember we had a uh, we saw in the experiment, in the very brief demo, we saw the following setup. We had a circular tube that looks like this, okay? And I was twisting this tube. So I'm going to draw the, draw the twisting in yellow. So I was twisting this tube by applying a torque or moment. This, so bottom is fixed. So this is fixed and I am applying a torque or axial moment and this is called T. The symbol for the axial moment is always T for torque. Okay. Next, when we twisted it, uh, things happened. We will worry about that. So I am going to draw a straight line here. And if I draw two straight lines, you will see that I get a rectangle on the cross section. So this rectangle became something that got twisted and it went like that. Remember that the rectangle became a parallelogram. Okay, if it's a small enough rectangle. Okay. In reality, what happens is the lines kind of wrap around themselves and if you look at it over a long period of time, it looks like a helix. So what happened was, that was because the top got twisted and the angle between this line and that line from the top, this angle is called the angle of twist and it's called phi. And the meaning of phi is how much did the top cross section rotate with respect to bottom cross section. And in our case, this angle of twist was 60 degrees. Right? That's the meaning of angle of twist. Okay. Then the next thing that we introduced was the length here. This thing is L and this is the distance of separation between the fixed cross section and the rotated cross section. That's the angle of separation. That's the length L. So torque or axial moment equals uh, 
मोमेंट अप्लाइड टू द क्रॉस सेक्शंस सो नोटिस दैट ऑल द इंटरेस्ट इज ऑलवेज इन द क्रॉस सेक्शंस सो आई वांट यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट द इंटरेस्ट इन ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स व्हेन एवर वी हैव अ लॉन्ग थिन शाफ्ट सो व्हेन एवर वी हैव शाफ्ट्स लाइक दिस द इंटरेस्ट इज ऑलवेज इन द क्रॉस सेक्शंस okay so now we got those two things so we now know what is meant by t what is meant by l and what is meant by phi and then we measured the radius this radius r equal to radius of the cross section and in our case the value was 1.25 inches remember we measured the diameter was 2 and 1/2 inches by the way in our case the length l was 9 inches okay so the first item is what happened was the next thing we are going to define is amount of shear amount of shear strain and the symbol is gamma and it's written like that and this is equal to let me write it down and then we will see how it is related so it is let's call this point a b the original point was c and d the moving point is c prime d prime so this is a that's b that is c and that's d this is c prime that's d prime and the amount of shear gamma equals the tan of the angle of tilt of a parallelogram what the heck is the angle of tilt that's this angle can you see that this vertical line got tilted into a slanted line and this angle of tilt so in our measurement this is C C prime over A C. Okay, so this is equal to C C prime divided by A C was L. So that's nine inches. So that's what it is. Okay, how much is C C prime? Now we come to the key relation. C C prime is radius. of cross section times angle of rotation of cross section so that turns out to be pretty easy that is equal to r times phi c c prime so finally we get the first important formula which is gamma equal to r phi over l that is radius times twist divided by length of separation so let's calculate this in our case what the values are so i'm going to switch over and we are going to do this calculation because we will find this to be very useful so i'm going to do the calculation on the side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to enter these numbers here so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to enter radius symbol is r and it is 1.25 inches so diameter symbol is d is 2.5 inches so anyway r equals diameter divided by 2 and then we got twist symbol phi i'm just going to write phi here because i don't want to i don't want to write the greek version i'm just going to write phi here and the value is um remember it has to be in radians so it is pi times 60 divided by 180 so equal to and that is in radians 
roughly speaking, so this is a useful thing to remember, one radian is about 60 degrees, okay? So you can see it's 1.047 radians, so that's close to 60 degrees. So think of it this way, roughly speaking, one radian is 60 degrees. Okay, so we got the twist, length, and the symbol is L, and the value is equal to radius times um, twist divided by length. Oh, what the heck am I doing? So length is, I'm sorry, length equals um, 9 inches. So finally we get what is the shear stream. The symbol is gamma and the value is, um, let us see, radius times twist divided by length. So this is in dimensionless units. So that's what we got up to now. We will continue adding terms there. So now that we have the shear stream, so why do we care about the shear stream? Because we need to worry about shear stress. Because remember, Tresca criteria and other failure criteria depends upon stress. So we are interested in the shear stress. So the shear stress By the way, up to now, this was all deformation or deformation analysis. Now the next thing we are going to do is material analysis. And in this case, the minute you see material analysis, we know we are going to use Hooke's law. Shear stress equals shear modulus. times shear strain which is g times r gamma which is g times r phi over l. So notice that, so that's what shear stress is, so I'm going to write that down. So we will see how this works out. First thing I want you to notice is that now it is things are depending upon g. The final thing that we are going to do, notice that it depends only upon the radius. So if I have a thin circular shaft, now if I look at the top view of the shaft, it looks thin like this. The thickness is T. And the shear stress acts like that. Right? And if I took a small piece, So force BF equals, so this is a small piece, so this angle is D theta, so this radius is R, R D theta times T, this is the area, times shear stress, which turns out to be R D theta T times G R phi over L. This is shear stress. This is area. So torque equals dt equals radius times force, which is R D F, which is, I'm going to group all the terms here. I got R cubed T D theta. These are all the geometry terms times G phi over L. So total torque equals integral r cube t d theta g phi over l which is very simple 2 
पाई और क्यूब टी जी फी ओवर एल ऑल दीज जोमेट्रिकल पैरामीटर्स आई वॉन्ट यू टू नोटिस क्रॉस सेक्शनल ज्योमेट्री दैट्स वॉट इज देर ओके एंड दिस क्रॉस सेक्शनल ज्योमेट्री पैरामीटर इज कॉल्ड जे सो वाई डिड यू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस नोटिस दैट इन द प्रीवियस केसेस वेन वी डिड एक्सीएल फोर्सेस वी हैड एफ एल ओवर ए और ई ए रिमेंबर दैट फ्ली नोटिस दैट वी हैड अ क्रॉस सेक्शनल ज्योमेट्री पैरामीटर दैट इट वॉज द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया now it's this cross sectional geometry parameter which is called j and actually what it is is the cross sectional and it's called polar moment of inertia that's what j is it is 2 pi r cube t for a thin thin tube so notice this has to be like a thin wall pressure vessel you know like a small tube cannot be like a thick thing so if it is like this if it is like this it won't really work because it's a very thick tube so that will not work it has to be a thin tube i cannot really show you so for example can you see the thin circle there if my tube is only that thin that is only of the thickness of the black circle then i can use this formula because everything depends upon the fact that it was a thin tube so for a thin tube it is j is 2 pi times radius q times thickness okay so now we have we can add more things so we can go up here i'm going to switch back to this and i'm going to add Uh, what is called uh, shear? We did shear stress, shear strain. So now we go to shear stress. So I'm going to add shear modulus. The symbol is G, and I'm going to put a fairly low. Remember, for steel, it's pretty high. It is uh, in the order of 200 gsi. I'm going to I'm going to put a small value, 10 ksi. because this is a soft squishy stuff can you see that so this is actually quite easy to twist its shear modulus is not very high so i'm just going to put this in 10 ksi so now i can talk about shear stress which is tau and which will be equal to g times shear strain and this is ks ks Uh, KPI, kilo pascals. That's not very high. So not KPA. It's KSI. That's not very high. I want to understand the shear stress in this is not very high. Of course, if this was like hundred KSI, then it would be fourteen KSI. That that's pretty high. Okay. So I want you to understand that that's the amount of shear stress at the radius R. so let us see if these things make sense i will worry about the torque for a second so let us look at whether the shear stress values make sense in the following sense so we have gamma equal to r phi over l so let us see if the length of this shaft if the length of this thing were longer you can see that it will be easier to twist so tau equals remember shear stress equals g r phi over l let us see if these things make sense okay so if i increase if i want to increase the angle of twist i have to increase tau can you see that so phi had better be in the numerator phi had better be in the numerator is it obvious to you that if the shaft was thinner it would be easier to twist right so notice if the radius is smaller it's easier to twist in fact the shear stress varies linearly with radius
So think of it this way, shear stress is proportional to radius. Bigger radius, higher shear stress. So I can write it as tau is proportional to r. So bigger radius, more shear stress, obvious. Same way, if this was a long shaft, not a short one, if it is a really long one, then it's much easier to twist. Is that obvious to you? If I think like a, like a, that's why, for example, a, a thread is much easier to twist. Why? First of all, it's got a very small radius. And second, typically strings are very long. So what matters is the radius to length ratio. And you can see that's what really matters. The shear stress is proportional to radius to length ratio. And then, of course, higher shear modulus, more stress. That's obvious, right? So we want to make sure that you understand this phenomenon. Now, if you look at the torque, I want you to see that torque equals uh, J G phi over L. That looks very awkward. J G phi over L. But I can write it in a very nice way. I can write it as phi equals T L over G J. Notice this is the counterpart to U equals F L over E I. So notice that the, the numerator always has external load. In this case, it's either axial force, shear force or torque. The length, which is the distance between the fixed cross section and the rotating cross section or the fixed cross section and loaded cross section. Then the corresponding material parameter and the corresponding geometrical quantity. The geometrical parameter of the cross section. Those are the four things that show. Sorry, EA. Those are the four things that show. So this is a fairly easy thing to remember. Now what happens for a solid shaft? For a solid shaft, the way we go about it is to think of it as concentric, large number, of concentric hollow shafts. Which means that if I took a solid shaft, I can pretend it's made up of layers and layers of hollow shafts. Right? For each hollow shaft, so this is one shaft, this is the next one, that's the next one, that's the next one, like that. For each hollow shaft, we know torque equals 2 pi r cubed T G phi over L. And in our case, each shaft has thickness T equal to dr, thickness of shaft. So total torque. equal to integral of torque of each hollow shaft summed over all the shafts which turns out to be integral 0 to r 2 pi r cubed dr times g phi over l. If you do this calculation, this will turn out to be a very nice result. This will turn out to be, if you do this calculation, it will turn out to be pi d cubed over, sorry, d fourth over 32 times g phi over l. So this is again polar moment of cross section. And the symbol is J again, J is solid. Okay, so now for this also torque, sorry, angle of twist is torque times L divided by G, J solid. So remember shear stress tau was 
or phi over L. So I can take this, plug it in here and I will get this is R times TL over GJ divided by L. So L, L gets cancelled. Sorry, G times that. So G, G gets cancelled and I will get R T over J or which is usually written as T R over J. So if I know the torque, I can calculate the shear stress. Pretty easy. It is torque times radius divided by so shear stress equals torque times radius divided by polar moment. And phi equals torque times length divided by shear modulus times polar moment. T L over G J. This is T R over J. These are the two, two most useful formulae. You can also figure out angle of twist. So I'm going to write that. So angle of twist is known. Shear strain gamma equals uh, angle of twist. Times uh, radius divided by length. That is phi or over L. Of course, I can rewrite this because I can substitute for phi and I will get also a very nice result that is TR over GJ, which is tau over G. Doesn't matter, all of them are the same. So we got three basic results one for shear stress, one for angle of twist, one for shear stream. These three actually we are going to use. Actually, there are two. One of them is derived. If I know, if I know this, if I know this and this, everything else is from Hooke's law. So there's no big deal. Okay. But the point is we have three results. We will use them in solving interesting problems in with regard to torsion of shafts. So the next couple of lectures uh, on YouTube are going to be on solutions to problems. Okay. With that, we are done. Thanks.